Hello, this is Maj again, co-founder of GMO Investing. Um, I wanted to talk today about Form 4 filings inside our transactions. I tried to put a different background back there at, uh, to kind of show that, but it's kind of funky. If I look like a little, I don't know, a robot or a hologram or something, and I think my background of my house is showing once in a while, so apologize for that, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Anyway, so um, yes, I mean, Form 4 filings are, are filings that um, basically track uh, insider transactions, um, employee transactions, uh, management team transactions, and um, individuals or entities with at least 10% ownership in a particular stock. So these are really important filings and I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to a share screen now and start showing you my outline for today to show you um, what I'll be talking about, why I think these filings are important. And also we'll be looking at um, a case study of you know, how to use form four filings, how to understand them and read them because you know, it, cause it, can, it kind of can get a little confusing um, if you haven't really done it before. So, and we thank the sec.gov website for that, making our lives that much easier. That's a sarcastic comment, um, but uh, we'll get through it. So let me um, share my screen so I can get, we can get going on that. I think I'm very small again. I don't know why. Let's see. It is what it is though. All right, so um, let's look at the outline, bring that up. So we're gonna go through why Form 4s are important. I'm gonna look at one of my first articles I wrote on Form 4 filing um, and talk about Evan Sutherland, ticker symbols ESCC, actually that just got acquired recently. I think by a private equity firm. We're going to talk about our Form 4 feed, which will, which tracks companies filing form or um, actually individuals and companies that are filing Form 4s. And then we're just going to go through how to um, um, read the, five, uh, the form filings and then talk. Maybe, maybe we have some time to talk about some tools we want to um, bring to you on this matter and other tools and we're getting it out a little bit. So let's start. So up the article I wrote a while ago, let me pull it up here. Um, I think it's here. So it was called Form 4 Filings Insider Buying 101. And it's a really, I think, an interest, a, a good article for you to read if you're interested in understanding um, how to kind of read these form filings. I followed it up uh, after that with another company, uh, with another article called Use Hidden Pages of Mirecap Form 4 Filings to Track Insider Transactions. Um, kind of wrote that a little hurd hurriedly because I wanted to get it out and um, I wasn't really too happy with it. So that's why I wanted to make this video and I'll probably go back and maybe edit that article or re uh, rewrite it to make it a little easier to digest because I, I, I actually tried to use it myself and it was a little difficult for me to go through. So I apologize for that. But this first article I think is really good. It's well received um, by a lot of our um, premium members as well as others that have read it. So um, we'll make sure to include a link to this article when we post this video so you can, so you can read it. And again, I encourage you to share these videos and we're getting some really good feedback on them. So it'll help us. Um, I think you'll know, spread the good word that we're doing this, so doing this more and hopefully people um, and members will start asking us what kind of videos they want to see from us in the future. So if we go to form, so there, there is that definitely, so why form four filings? Why do we track insider holdings? Um, um, there's, you know, been, there's been studies, I mean, insider monkey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, wrote a um, article a while ago and they, I'll just read you, they estimate the advantage insider anomaly advantage to be at 11 percent points over the market return annually um this advantage tops out closer to seven percentage points 
says Ian Dugan, founder of Insider Monkey. So, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's different art, there's different studies that talk about the insider anomaly, but I can tell you from firsthand experience. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know how extensive, how these studies were done or how they, um, how they conducted them, but I can tell you that definitely it, it is a barometer that we watch to help us invest. And, you know, these studies probably don't take into account being able to do extra research. So imagine following form for or insider buying and selling actually, I guess, uh, on companies you've, you've researched that should kind of help with conviction. So, you know, why, why do we do it? Why do we look at form four filings? Well, um, if we look at a broad kind of reasons over here. So, um, we, well, you said the source of alpha, you can give you def we think we can give you a, some way to um, increase your returns. Uh, but more importantly, it's to gain confidence really in some of the stocks that maybe you already own that are falling um, that you uh, might want to buy or maybe you're thinking about panic selling. You know, the number of reasons that you need to gain confidence here. Um, and that's especially really important in times like we're going through right now with the coronavirus and COVID-19, I guess. Um, it's really tough watching your stocks go down and you don't know if you should add to them. There might be new stocks you want to buy and you're not quite sure. And um, obviously, I, I think interviewing management is the best way to get that kind of feel. But this is just another way to help. And it's, I think anybody can do it from beginner to advanced, which is why I like it. And uh, what's nice about it, too, is if, if you do it long enough, and I think there's even some websites that track insiders and how they, how they've, um, what the stocks have done after they bought stock or sold stock. So you can start seeing trends maybe in the way some of these insiders and, or, or uh, big firms, investors um, buy stocks, so what happens after they buy or sell. Um, you know, you, you can do it not only when, you know, stocks are going down, I mean, the stocks are going up, hitting new highs and you see insiders buying, that might be a really interesting, a good, um, a positive sign. So um, another one I like here is, is that when, when you see an insider buy a stock for the first time in a long time, and I'll, I'll show you um, how, we did, how we did that with one of those stocks we're looking at. But there's, there's a lot of things you can jot down in your journal in terms of things you want to see. And um, so I think it's really important for us to go through this. All, you know, also on the other side, now I, mean, I really, mainly I look at stocks as, you, as um, insider buying as a tool to um, tell me when I want to go long stock or add to my positions. I don't want really to look at selling that much. I mean, you know, Peter Lynch has that saying, I think, something like, um, insiders sell their stock for a number of reasons, but they buy it only for one reason. And they, they think the stock's going to go up. So um, I think it's a more powerful indicator of uh, what a stock may do by, by looking at purchases versus selling. However, you know, when you do see insiders selling their stock, when they're hyping it up in press releases or conferences or whatever, you might want to take note of that too, though, on the negative side. Well, I'm not really going to talk about that. So interesting, you know, when we actually wrote this article on um, a form four filings, the company we highlighted in that article was ESEC, I mean, ESCC. And uh, we were really showing how um, a, a large shareholder who has been involved in the stock for a long time, his name is Peter Kellogg. He's a billionaire investor who actually invests in microcaps and actually nano caps all over the OTC. Uh, debunks another theory of the financial media. Um, if Peter can do it, so can we um, invest in smaller companies. But, uh, you know, and I went through it and this, I think this, so this article was written back in, let's see, that was 2017, February 24th. And um, I'll also send you a case study on ESCC as part of this video too. So you can see our, our, our background without getting it too much into over here, but Insider buying was one of the reasons we kept buying, holding the stock. Um, we re initiated our position in 2014 for um, other reasons than insider buying. At that time, was, the stock was going through a turnaround. Um, or I'm sorry, it was uh, going through some, um, a trans, uh, some, some changes that weren't going to improve its balance sheet. And um, there was, after, after that catalyst occurred, um, you know, the stock went up, but then it, it kind of ended up being a trading range. It was very volatile, going up and up, up a lot, down a lot. We bought the stock originally at 14 cents. It went to $1.50 or 60. 
all the way down to you know 30, 40, 50 cents again. It was a while, you know, after the catalyst occurred, they were having some issues with their operations, I guess, in terms of consistency, even after the special situation catalyst caused the stock to initially go up. So we were getting a little, little concerned about um, the company's ability to um, convince us to hold the stock past the special situation catalyst that caused the stock to originally go up. Then we know there's some form for um, insider buying by Peter Kellogg, and he had not, and um, it must, must have been, let's see what date that was, if I can find it here. Uh, when were these filings? So back in 2017, in January 2017, I guess we noticed that he stepped back into the, um, into the game after not buying some stock for a while. And, um, and he kept buying. He, 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 was, he, was, he was just, he was basically supporting stock for a long time. He was buying in the 50s, 60s, in the $1 range. And um, so we kept a lot of this. We sold some of the stock along the way between, I guess, uh, up until uh, maybe years recently. But we kept some too. And because we wanted, we thought maybe Peter was, um, you know, knew something that we didn't know or had this, had this confidence for a reason. And the, the stock was sitting around, I think, 50, 60 cents recently. Um, after um, hitting a dollar fifty uh, a couple of years ago, or three years ago maybe, and the company was just um, sold, or I, I, I think a private equity firm came take took the company over. I think a buck twenty or something, buck twenty six in that range. So that was it was a um, that's a good example of hey, um, a, a really big you know billionaire investor coming in who invests in nano caps and micro caps. We kept buying the stock and supporter stock, and um, obviously he made the right decision. We just we just wrote his coattails to get some uh, on his confidence, and we ended up you know doing well in that investment. So that's just a, that's just one example of what um, what four and four filings did for us. You know, we actually bought, originally bought the stock at fourteen cents, so um, all in all, it was a pretty good pretty good hold for us um, since two thousand fourteen. So then I'd also talk about some of the secret codes here to be able to reform from filing. So let's, let's go over to that now. Let's, let's take a look at, um, form four. So, so you can see that actually we have a feed here that I don't even think we really talked to members much about. We created it, but we kind of like didn't do much with it. Let me see if I can find it. If I have it here. Yeah, so we have a feed here that actually brings in these form four filings, and I'll, of course, include that link for you too. Um, but it doesn't do you any good unless you can unless you can read them. So let's do that now. So in this in, for this um, purposes, I'm going to go look at one of the one of our best performing stocks we've had in a long time. We have, we've held this. I've held the stock purchase for 13 years. Symbol is KRMD. Old symbol is REPR, um, RMS Medical. They make infusion pumps um, for home health care settings uh, to infuse medication into, into, into people, into patients. So let's pull up the scc.gov, which I already have ready to go here. And this thing's getting in my way. Wonderful. Let's see if we can sneak in there. There we go. So we go to scc.gov and we want to, we want to look at, um, Search. Where is that? I'll find it. Let's go. Because oh, I made my, my screen's on a small screen here, so it changed it to a mobile thing. Let's see. Why can't I see it? Oh, here it is. This must be it. There it is. My big head was hiding the burger menu. <laughs> so let's go to filings. And we want to search company filings. Ah. Do it again. And you've, a lot of you have probably already seen this page and are familiar with it. So what's going on now, just to let you know, so if the company is not a, if it's an OTC company or um, it will not, um, even though it might f file 
uh, SEC filings, some of them do, they won't show up um, with a ticker symbol. So, but we'll do it here. But uh, KRMD is a NASDAQ company, so it's not OTC, so it will show up here. Um, let's go uh, KRMD. Ah, I need a different keyboard. So now we go here. This is all the filings for KRMD, SEC filings. And so the first, the first things first is we need to find out where these form four filings are, these insider, transa uh, insider um, transactions are hiding. For. So let's go to the, um, I'll show you here. So, and I'll have this outline, I'll make sure I have um, included also in the video for you so you can go through it if you want. So you see here this little this bar, the main menu bar over here, or a header, I guess you want to call it. You see this thing called owner, it's called ownership with a question mark. Let's uh, right now the, the default view on sec.gov is to exclude insider ownership or form four filings and other similar filings. Let's click only though, because that's all we want to see. And we'll click search. Now all the form four filings come up. Unfortunately, you don't know. I mean, when you look at this, you, you can't tell who's filing the form for filing, which is a little bit, a little annoying. Uh, there are some websites out there that do help with that. And I'll get into that a different time and analyze those. But for this purpose, let's go through the laborious task of doing this. So let's open the form four by hitting documents. And here you see the form four. In the I'll call it the document. I'll call it the document index. And you know um, the reason you see several filings here is because Joseph Manko, who is the um, the individual that I'm most interested in following here, he's an activist who got involved in the company I think in 2014, and was buying stock um, all the way. He did. I think he got involved maybe in an offering, and then was buying has been buying in the open market ever since then, from 2014 straight on. I think through 2018, maybe even 19, um, as high as maybe four dollars a share in the high threes. Um, so that's somebody I really am interested in following beyond KRMD2, which I'm going to show you how that, how we can use form four filings here to see that also. But these, I mean, when you see the, all these other, um, entities, these are all his funds that he's, he deals, he's um, involved in. So rep, first they show the Repromed, which is the actual company over here, the issuer. And then they show, um, all the companies or individuals that are related to this form four. And I'm just going to, um, so let's open up the form four now. Okay, cool. So when we look at this, you know, we can see here's, here's his name. And we're going to come back to this in a second. It shows he's, he's a director. He's on the board of directors actually. Um, and now when you see, we can look at this, the, these tables here and this is where it gets kind of a little confusing somewhat. So when we look at insider transactions, we we're really more, we're really more interested from more looking at if these are relevant to us from the non-derivative table here, you see here, and this is the derivative table. This is, um, now this is a very important point. I forgot that I forgot to make uh, early on, but we're going to get into it now is that when you're looking at insider buying, you want to make sure that the company, um, bought the stock or I'm sorry, the individual or a yeah, company that bought the stock, is buying it with their own, you know, hard-earned cash, their own money, and not with, you know, getting it from options and awards and gifts and grants. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's not really an indicator of, hey, I put my own money in the stock and I have, I have confidence that's going to go up. So we need to determine that right away when we look at these filings. Um, and so you do that by looking at the code. So sometimes what you'll see, which is, which is kind of confusing, you'll see sometimes in the derivative securities acquired and disposed, this area here, this is where you might see options and grants being awarded. And then um, they might exercise those options, right, to buy or sell stock. And it will still, that part of the transaction, the exercise will show up here. So you might be confused and think it's a non-derivative um, transaction, but it really, uh, it really emanated from 
or began from a derivative security. So the way we look, the way we um, kind of analyze that by looking at the codes. So you'll see in this column, column three, there's an A. So we need to know what that means. And in that article that I wrote originally, I um, talked about the secret, secret codes. And these are, I actually got these from the ncc.gov website and I'll show you where I got it from later. But here's all the codes and you should definitely, you know, have these, if you're gonna do form four analysis, make sure you understand these. I mean, I, I talked to people who have been in this business for 30, 40, 50 years and, conf um, and they tell me, oh, this insider's buying stock. Well, they don't realize that the form four they're looking at is not a direct purchase. It's based on, you know, free stock given to that individual. So it's really, useless to me um, so we're looking at we want to look at these right here we want to see these type of codes the P the S the V um, so a V is an open market private purchase um, open market or private purchase of a non-derivative security or derivatives or derivative securities so that's where it gets confused so we're looking for the open market or private purchase of a non-derivative security um, uh, or here's, here's the S will stand for a sale. And the V is a, um, a transaction that they, that was um, reported on the form four earlier than they had to. I, I don't have in front of me, I'm sorry, how many days they, um, from when they purchased a stock or sell a stock that they have to report, or that someone has to report a form four uh, filing, but I will get that um, for you and have that in the video also in the transcript area. So if we go back and look at Mr. Manko, so this is an A. You might think in your head it means acquired, right? Yeah, that's good, but we'll get that. That's where it start, things are start getting confusing. The A stands for, if we go here, grant, award, or other acquisition pursuant to rule 16B-3B. 16 16 so it's probably some you know, option, um, derivative um, Derivative rule. So he's, the, these these shares that he got here in this particular transaction um, were all, were, or the thousand shares was just the grant or were probably from being on the board. So that's really not a significant um, transaction for me. But now you can see what I'm talking about. So if we can go back, maybe let me see if I can go back and find a um, really old. Um, you go back far enough. Let's go here. Okay, so now we have a P, right? So let's go back and look at the code. This is back from 2000, what, um, is there a date here? Uh, 2018 of December, and there's a P in this column here. Go ahead and see your codes. And the P is an open market or private purchase. So that's what you wanna see, and you know, up until like four hours, that's all, most of what he was doing was, most of the form fours you saw were these P's. And it just tells you here if he acquired, or, or, so obviously it was a P for purchase, so he, a, a stands for acquired. So, um, and then it tells you the price he acquired it at, how many shares he, had, uh, he owns after that, after that purchase. This column here, which is I, um, it, stands for, it means it's an indirect. So you might see, I guess, an I or a D. So a D means, a D would mean that um, Manco bought it for, for his personal account, his personal name. Um, I means he bought it through one of his funds. Um, so because that means um, indirect. So, and it tells you here, Horton Freedom LP. It tells you the, uh, the, the fund he bought it through or entity he bought it through. So now that's, so now you know, that's really, that's easy, and this is a very easy part of it. Once you get the form four in front of you, you can think, boom, was it direct, was it, was it an open market purchase, or, a, or was it a derivative purchase, or was it based on award or options or a thing? So um, hopefully you got that. But now you wanna go like, all right, well, what if you wanna, you're, you're curious, and let's say this is the, the first time you saw this on, on, on Manco, and you wanna know more about um, Manco. So let's see what else, where I will go next in the outline here. I want to stay in the particular order I talked about here. So we, we saw the, we did that already. We, we selected the only from the menu option label called ownership with a question mark to get the list of form four filings for a particular company. Uh, we opened a form four 
And then we went through the form four itself, looking at the secret codes, direct versus indirect. Um, and oh, there, oh, I should go to the footnotes, I'm sorry. One more last thing here. So some of these might have footnotes in them, just talking about the transaction and where to go and where to go find more information. So a lot of times they'll tell you about, hey, if no, 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 Manco bought this through uh, one of his funds. So it's important to read those footnotes. A lot of times those footnotes will actually tell you, give you more, more information in terms of if there was an option or a award or a grant um, associated with, with the transaction. Go back here. Now we're interested in knowing more about this buyer or the seller, in this case, the buyer. So you want to see how, how do we find these um, um, more, more insight into Manco, for example. So let's do this. So he's gonna, we're going to take you to path one directly from the Form 4 filing. That's what I have here. So if we go, we're still on this Form 4 filing we opened up earlier. And let's click on, let's see what it says to click on here. Make sure I just do it in the order I wanted to do it here. Um, let's click in his name and see what happens. Now we have, voila, we have, these are all the form fours that Manco has ever um, filed. But unfortunately, it doesn't, you don't get much color from that. So what do we got to do from here? But at least this, if you wanted to open each one, you could do it, I guess. But a better way of doing it is to actually go a step further. And that entails, I believe, hitting on ins get insider transactions. I'll just make sure that's right. Um, right here. So we'll go to select get insider transactions. Do this. And now we have um, all these, th this is a great page that shows you all this, all this individual companies that Manco was involved in through four and four filings, where he's a lar um, he may obviously a large shareholder um, or, or an insider. Um, and then, if you can continue to scroll down the page, you can see all his transactions like um, he's ever made. He's ever made detail on the transactions. And you can see here, it tells you the column. Trans if you go to transaction type, it'll tell you if it was an award. This is, you know, this is an awesome page. If it was a direct you know, purchase, these are all just everything else is nothing you want to really concern yourself with. So, and then it tells you, also, if you scroll, let's go, let's go to a, a um, purchase one here, right here. It'll tell you, I guess it's the shares you bought. So you have the column, number of numbers, um, shares that was transacted, number of securities owned. So although it doesn't tell you the price he was doing these things at, which is unfortunate. Or does it? Let me make sure. Does it or not? Uh, it does not, which is another weakness of this. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't do that. They can obviously do it. It's in the form four. Um, but anyway, that's that's that. So then, now we now we have some more color on Manco. And this is the this is the I think the, I believe this is the deepest you can go and um, get on a person. But you can also get from this. Um, uh, let's see. There's another way to get in there too. There might be, but I don't know if I have it here in the outline. Price, ah, yes, right to the point. So it's a path two. So if we go to the form four index list, let's go there real quick. What was I talking about there? Oh, sorry. This, ah, maybe here. Yes, yeah, so you can also go when you're in this form four index area, this area here, and that when you open the form four um, doc uh, from the main from the main sec.gov list, go to go to Manco here, and let's see if it says something here. You can just go to reporting, and there, 
you can do it from there too. So this is actually, I have to, I'll change the outline a little bit for us to, that shouldn't say, um, that shouldn't say consistent our transactions. Yeah, I'll change that. So, um, and let's say, but you want it now, now we, we dug into, you know, Manco, but let's say you want to see all the insiders, all the, the people, our directors and employees and big investors that have actually transacted um, with, um, in the stock filing form fours. You do that by going back to the main SEC list. So we'll go here. Back, back, back. I can just do this. Exclude. Go back to the original. And inside our transactions, you hit this. So we hit that. Now we have all the entities and people who have invested, who have filed for and for us. And you can just start doing your research like we just did on these individuals if you wanted to. Um, so that's basically how you read the form fours and how you can go about um, starting to learn how to navigate that, that process and that research process. Now, as you can see, it would be great if there was a tool that, um, that helped us with that. You know, our job at Geo Investing is to make sure we bring these to you with um, these four, four, insignificant form four um, transactions. And this, we're, not, we're not always doing it. We're only doing it in certain times when we see things happening that... Um, Warren, I was talking about it. So a lot of times it, it seems it happens in pullbacks in the market, like it did in 2000. Um, I think it was a fourth quarter, remember 2018, right? And we were looking at some instead of um, transactions there to help us pick some stocks. And we were talking about it with you. Um, even with, a lot of times also when the, when, the, when the big caps were doing really good and the small caps weren't doing that great and nano caps were doing worse and America's doing worse. We were looking, and, and if these lot of stocks were not moving with the big caps for that the ten year bull run we had, and and uh, you saw a lot of insiders taking advantage of that and buying stock. So we would talk about that a lot. So right now we're very interested in watching to see what ins if we see um, insider activity um, in stocks that pulled back tremendously due to COVID nineteen. But we really haven't seen a lot yet. We've seen some, but not a, a tremendous amount, which is a little worrisome. <laughs> But uh, we're definitely um, looking for that sign here soon. Now, it would be better, I think, though, if we could provide a tool. Now, there are tools out there that I've used. And I'm not going to talk about them today, as I said earlier. But um, I don't – the tools try to help you do what you just did or give, bring a lot of that information to you in a, in a way you can um, – in a searchable format um, in, in, um, in a way that cuts, cuts, cuts out a lot of what we just talked about. But there's some weaknesses in those tools, and um, I'm excited to maybe hopefully bring that to you one day here soon. We're working on it. But that will help you just do everything we just did here. It will just be a very quick process for you. We'll be, you'll, you'll be getting this feed here. For example, it'll be the feed we're bringing here. Is, it's, it's, this is just the very beginning of it. So we're, bringing, we're going to bring all the feeds and then bring in a lot of that detail we just talked about into that feed. So it'll be nice. You'll see all these columns. And be able to tell right away, you know, direct, indirect, how many shares uh, were bought, the price they paid for it, and a lot of other stuff too. But um, it's a tricky program involved with that. And we're about ninety percent of the way there, and we're just that last ten percent uh, causing us, some, bringing us some challenges. So, if you're interested in, in beta, te beta, beta testing that product, definitely let us know and send us a, you know, email or something, or um, or give us a call, or you know, you can reach me on Twitter too at Moss Geo Investing um, to, uh, to reach out and to say you want to uh, be a part of that beta. So I think that's, that's all I really want to talk about here. I mean, I can, um, let me see, make sure before I sign off here. Sorry, this is a little boring, but you know, this isn't always going to be exciting stuff, <laughs> but uh, something we got, we got to go through it. I know some of you like to do deep dive research. And even if you don't, it's, I think it's important to know what these things mean. Because even if you're, it's important to know how to interpret the data coming to you. So let's say you had a research um, tool you were using that was 
had a form four filing feed and some it'll you see form four and it'll sometimes a feed will show okay insider bought twenty thousand shares well a lot of these fees don't tell you um, that that twenty thousand share purchase was an option purchase um so it's your, your next step would be to verify if that feed's correct and if it um if it was actually bringing you a market transaction so it's always good to understand um what this process means and everything involved around it so you can make decisions even when you're getting taking shortcuts to hopefully get your information um but i got by the way so and then we should mention so KRMB, it was in you know it's a great example of an insider or, or a um sorry a director back in the truck up buying stock continuously from 30 40 50 cents to a dollar to three dollars four dollars if you've been following KRMB, we wrote that up for even though i owned it for 13 years we wrote it up on Geo Vesting for the first time. I believe it was 2014, around 34 cents. The stock recently hit um, 1075. So, and what was interesting about that story was that Manco was buying the stock um, around 30, uh, 40 cents, 30 cents, when this company was going through some FDA issues, which was a really scary moment for me because I had a lot. I mean, I had a pretty good chunk of the stock at the time. Um, and um, I was I was making I was actually adding to the stock and you know adding 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 shares because um, I love the home health home healthcare story and that growth that growth story I love that Mac was buying it and then they had this FDA issue um, which they re eventually resolved but you know I didn't know I I mean I only could have so much confidence they would resolve this issue and the fact that Manco was buying through that whole period gave me a lot of confidence that they were going to um, get through it. So, and he was right. He was right a big, a big way. Um, just as a, as a casual thing here, I mean, if we, if, let's go, let's go back one more second to Manco and uh, let's see what's, was it here? So these are stocks I might want to take a look at. I'm familiar, familiar with Wireless Telecom Group. We've actually highlighted on with Geo Investing. So these are some other ones. Maybe I'll take a look at over the weekend um, to see um, if there's any reason to like them. But congratulations to Manco. Great, great job we did with Repromed for sure. So that's all. That's all I have for you right now. Um, if I, I'm sure I'll be able to have a um, another update on four and four filings at some point maybe to talk about hopefully our tools, um, how it compares to other tools out there and how I think I'll be able to simplify your research process and, and reduce the amount of time it takes you to, do your, um, to um, do your research. That's a lot of what we try and do here and make sure that we bring you information to help you reduce your research time uh, and, any, and the tools we will hopefully bring you in the future here will continue to help you reduce your research time. So thank you. Um, have a safe, you know, be safe and hope you're, um, uh, you're, um, trying to stay sane during your quarantine. I know I am playing my guitar a lot, doing a little bit of reading, taking walks, taking jogs. We're still working out. So eating healthier, which is good. So there's some positive that come, came out of all this, I guess. Um, but, uh, stay safe and talk to you soon. And really, really want to thank you for your support. Thank you. Bye.